Hello and welcome to this Christians in Science seminar, Science and Faith, Friends or Foes. I'm Paul Yurt and I'm the Chairman of Christians in Science, where we aim to bring science and the Christian faith together. Now I always think it's sad when a friend becomes a foe and often it's because of a simple misunderstanding. But I think in this case it's fair to say that there's been misunderstanding on both sides. I remember an article published about 10 years ago in the Guardian newspaper by a very distinguished Oxford scientist and he wrote about what he called a metaphysical chess match between science and religion and argued that science had checkmated religion and had won the battle, that in fact um, science was the foe of religion and vice versa. So in talking about this metaphysical chess match, he seemed to be implying that both science and religion were talking about the same metaphysical things. And he seemed to be then suggesting that science or physics was a kind of metaphysics, like um, some other sciences. But in fact, metaphysics deals with stuff that goes beyond physics or beyond science. It deals with the kind of things that is more properly the remit of religion or faith. So, although they sound the same, they're really different things. Now, some atheists, of course, maintain that science does disprove the faith claims because they can be decided by scientific methods. But that is what we would call a category error. We at Christians in Science want to suggest that both sides of this debate, the atheists who think that um, religion is the enemy of science and some Christian people, on the other hand, who think that science is the enemy of faith, are indeed both mistaken that they've come to this view because of a simple misunderstanding. Now, of course, to be fair, it is easy to see why people could be confused because there are indeed some arguments that are put that would suggest that science is an enemy of faith. Here's a couple of them. For example, science has shown that the universe is so big, so enormous, it contains 100 billion galaxies, each galaxy having something like 100 billion stars, and we are just one small planet around a very insignificant sun or star in a not very important part of the universe and therefore um, our existence is meaningless and life has no purpose. Secondly, science can explain everything that we see around us in terms of the laws of nature and there's just no room for miracles and there's no such thing therefore as the supernatural. Thirdly, of course, there's the old chestnut of the theory of evolution which explains how animals have come to take their different forms and therefore that shows that what the Bible says about animals being created in their existing forms is just wrong and therefore the Bible can't be trusted. And then fourthly there's the universe itself again that came into being by the Big Bang, our most accurate scientific theory tells us about 13 and a half billion years ago it sprung into existence in a mighty explosion creating all the stars that we see today. And so, in fact, we don't even need a creator because this was a spontaneous fluctuation that brought everything into existence. Now, there's not time here today to go into all of these arguments in detail, but I think we can look at each of them quite briefly and see that they contain a faulty assumption or a mistaken understanding things. Take the very first one. The fact that the universe is so big and we are so small and therefore insignificant. Notice what that argument has done. It started off with physics, the physics of the universe being so large, and ends up with metaphysics saying that we are not significant. So it's made a transition without us noticing from um, physics to metaphysics. But when you think about it, really it can't do that because it assumes therefore that our significance is in some way dependent upon our size. But we know that's not true. If it was true then your leg would be just a little bit more important or significant than your brain or an elephant would be more important to you than your pet dog and you know that's not true. 
So there's no logical connection between size and significance. Secondly, there's the argument about miracles, that science has shown that we can explain everything in terms of natural laws, and there's no room for the supernatural. Let me quote to you one of the most famous of our modern scientists who helped found modern science, and that was Lord Kelvin in the 19th century, a very distinguished scientist. And he said this, flying heavier than air flying machines are impossible. Now he said that on the basis of the laws of gravity, that heavier than air machines would fall to the ground. But of course what Kelvin didn't know at the time was of the laws of aerodynamics, that air flowing over a wing shaped uh, shape can produce an uplift that will counteract the downward force of gravity. So for Kelvin, the sight of a jumbo jet flying would look like a miracle. So. What I'm going to suggest then is that um, what we look at as a miracle could be explained by laws of science that we've not yet discovered. And indeed, um, that's indeed quite likely. If the God who made this universe knows all that can be known, he could know things that we don't know or cannot know. But you say, don't talk to me about the supernatural. I can't believe in that. Well, fair enough. Actually, the Bible doesn't talk about the supernatural either. Indeed, the Hebrew Bible doesn't have a word for supernatural. Because to God, everything is natural. And therefore, what he does has some kind of logical and rational explanation, even if we can't see what it is at the moment. So it's not true to say that because we can't explain things, that miracles per se are impossible. And then let's think about um, evolution. What evolution, of course, tells us is how one life form changes into another. But way back in the 12th or 13th century, Aquinas pointed out that creation is not change. And what the story of Genesis is telling us is that God brought all the creatures into existence, into being. And he's not giving us in Genesis a scientific account of how that came about, but he's telling us about his purpose that we are the creation of God for his purpose and created to love him and to respond to him in faith. And then that comes to, of course, that's relevant for the fourth point, that the universe began out of nothing in the Big Bang, and so we don't need a creator. But actually, when you think about that too, it's logically and even scientifically impossible that something can come from nothing. The philosopher Leibniz, who lived at the time of Newton, put it this way, why is there something rather than nothing? Or in more up-to-date form, Stephen Hawking asks, why did the, the universe take the, the bother to come into existence? What was it that breathed the fire into the equations that he had solved? So what the Christian faith is saying is that God is the creator is responsible for the existence of things and we can then understand how things change by the laws of nature that he has made. But of course science has been an incredibly powerful tool in helping us to understand the world around us and in fact um, there's a story told of some scientists who felt so confident that they could explain everything and do almost anything they wished that there was no, no need anymore for God. And so they got a delegation together and went to God and told him that now they could do anything they needed and he could retire. And God said to them, is that really true? But I made you out of the dust of the earth. Could you do that? So the scientists looked at each other and said, hmm, yeah, well, we have made babies in test tubes and we understand the human genome. Yeah, we can do that. And so one of the scientists bent down and he picked up a handful of dust and they went to go out. And God said, uh, not so fast there. Just put that dust back. You make your own dust. You see, what God is telling us in the Bible is that existence is a result of what he has done. And he brings things into existence. That's what it means to be the creator. So when we look at what science can tell us, we are just amazed at what we see because 
what we find is an, an immense order all the way through from the tiniest cell all the way through across the universe to the distant galaxies that there's a great order in, un in the nature that we see and the laws of physics help us understand that. So much so that it looks like um, it's been designed for a purpose. And some of the coincidences that have had to take place for us to be here, to be having this discussion, are truly remarkable. In fact, if you have a sequence of things and each of them has a certain probability, you have to multiply all the probabilities together to find what the chances are of that end result. And it turns out that there's so many, quite a sequence of things that have to be just right. The forces in the nucleus, the force of gravity, the force of electromagnetism have to be just right for us to be here. In fact, one of the puzzles uh, as people were trying to understand the universe was why there was appeared to be so much carbon, um, more than you would have expected um, given the, the laws that they knew at the time. And so much so that the astrophysicist Fred Hoyle, who was actually an atheist, who believed that um, the universe had always been there, and it was him who gave the name the Big Bang as a pejorative term for the theory that things had started 13 billion years ago. But when he looked at why there should be so much carbon, he found a very remarkable coincidence that caused the creation to happen unexpectedly. And he said this, that a common sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with the physics as well as the chemistry and biology and that there are no blind forces worth speaking about in nature. The numbers one calculates from the facts seem to me so overwhelming as to put this conclusion almost beyond question. So what Hoyle was recognising here was that there were so many signs of mind behind the universe and that these signs were really significant. Today we talk in terms of the fine tuning of the universe. So many things are just right for us to exist at all. Now of course this doesn't amount to a proof that God exists, but it equally shows us that science is not capable of disproving his existence either. But faith then is not just blind believing something you know ain't true. Faith is a rationally justified belief. Science can indeed point us to the existence of a mind behind the universe, but to get to know him we may need other kinds of evidence. So other kinds of evidence is available to us if we want to look for it. For example, we could think of the almost universal sense of right and wrong, the moral sense that we all have, although it may vary from culture to culture, Everyone seems to have a sense of, of goodness, of right and wrong, of justice and fairness. And somehow that always seems linked to the mind behind the universe as well. That it's not just something that we have invented. So the universe seems to turn on a moral axis. That we are aware of a moral compass directing us to what we should be doing. What we ought to do. And then of course... There's historical evidence. There's the historical evidence for the life and the death and indeed the resurrection of Jesus. In fact, when we look at the evidence, the written eyewitness evidence and the circumstantial evidence surrounding that event, the resurrection of Jesus is the only complete explanation that takes account of all the facts. And then, of course, there's the experience of men and women all down the ages who have encountered God in various ways and particularly through Jesus Christ, how he has changed their lives. Now this evidence can't be lightly dismissed and needs to be taken into account. And then fourthly, I could speak of my personal experience. I'm essentially an experimental physicist or scientist. And so I have found in my experience that by putting my trust in Christ, it has changed my life and changed it for the better. And that accords with with what other people have found. So personal experience is also part of the evidence that we need to take account of. So really what we're saying at Christians in Science is that science is a tremendous gift of God for us. He has given it to us as part of our task of being co-creators with him in his world. It helps us 
through medical science to bring healing. It helps us also to feed the hungry and it helps us to understand our environment so that we can better care for it. And so at Christians in Science we want to assert that, Christ, that science and faith are friends and not foes and we can bring them together for their mutual enhancement. At Christians in Science we can help you in the church in a number of ways. For example, we produce materials that deal with some of these science and faith issues. For example, our Thinking About series is a, a set of, of pamphlets in which we explore some of these ideas such as thinking about the Big Bang or fine tuning, thinking about evolution, thinking about how to interpret Genesis, and also ethical questions about bioethics and what sciences like neuroscience can have to tell us about what happens in religious experience. These are important questions and we can provide expert input into your education in your churches on those subjects. We also produce materials especially for students, for Christian students who are going to university to study science subjects being a Christian in physics, being a Christian in chemistry, in mathematics, and engineering, earth sciences, and so on. And so these are there to help Christian students integrate their studies with their faith. But most of all, Christians in Science is a network of scientists, mostly, uh, who are Christians in the community and in local churches. Scientists and philosophers and uh, theologians and anyone interested in that kind of thing. But particularly we have a network of expert scientists who can speak on these subjects with authority and have street credibility to your audience. And so they can come and give talks in your churches to help enhance your faith, but also be involved in outreach activities where they can help um, defuse and remove some of the stumbling blocks to faith that lie in people's paths. We also have in Christians and Sciences a list of internationally recognised scientists and speakers on science and faith topics that you can come and invite to special events that you may organise together with other churches in your local area. Now if you are keen to um, support Christians in Science and you work in science in some way, or either as a scientist or as a school teacher, then you'd be very welcome to join us and benefit from uh, the, the membership uh, features that include regular updates on what we're doing, our conferences that we organise each year, student conferences, as well as providing um, materials that you can draw upon. And you may feel that perhaps membership is not appropriate for you, but you would like to support our work. In that case, we'd invite you to become a friend of Christians in Science. And then you can support us in prayer and financially, but also receive all our information and have access to our resources. And then we also would encourage you and your churches to become affiliated to Christians in Science so that we can join together and help one another in our mission to the world. Because that's really what we're here for. Christians in Science exists to help Christians enhance their faith by a deeper understanding of science as a gift from God and to help churches in their outreach to a sceptical world and we can become our partners in mission. Thank you for listening. Nothing beats sitting on it. Hearing it. Tasting it. Wearing it. Handling it. Trying it. Comparing it. The copier produces a thousand copies for four pounds. The RISO Digital Printer produces a thousand copies for £1.20 at 140 pages per minute. Discussing it. The interesting thing about this centre is it's a very difficult breed on a very small site. Buying it. Recommending it. I definitely recommend it. It's always good to have resources 
and yeah this is very resourceful so it's a great place to be nothing beats being here buy your tickets online now creonline.co.uk forward slash tickets